This group of trackers from Grassroots Wildlife Conservation is looking for Blanding's turtles, a threatened species. Uh, wherever the turtle is, if you point towards that direction, the sound will be louder. So right now we're getting a loud signal heading out the swamp that way, so that means that the turtle is out that way. The Blanding's turtle's numbers have been declining sharply for decades. There are a lot of older turtles, but very few of the young survive. Grassroots Wildlife Conservation is trying to increase those odds by finding nesting turtles and protecting the nests. It's essentially impossible to find them just by walking around because the turtles will come up out of the swamp here and they'll usually walk into the first row of houses um, just on the other side of this path and they'll nest in people's lawns and their flower beds. The only real chance we have of finding their nests is if we are radio tracking them. Seems a lot over here now. There she is. Keep the light over here. And at the end of this night of searching, they find turtle number 2049. Here's your transmitter. And this is what planting turtles do when they're exploring, looking for a nesting site, but they're not ready to nest that night. They find a spot, they kind of tuck themselves into the leaves, so this is where she's going to sleep for tonight. So that's um, turtle 2037, um, which is really exciting because she's actually, this is going to be her first year nesting ever. Throughout that evening, turtle 2037 starts several nests, only to be spooked by a passing car or some other sign that this is not a safe place. She's, she's been digging nests, trying to dig a nest over here earlier, but she kept getting spooked, so she's already dug three holes. Um, but for whatever reason... So is that her digging a hole? I, we always kind of say that a wildlife's best chance of success is having caring and protecting neighbors around them. Um, so A, to have the residents know, oh, there's endangered turtles that live right in my neighborhood um, and, you know, I should be careful when I drive around, um, keep an eye out, drive slowly. At about 10 p.m., she settles in. Over the next several hours, she will lay about a dozen eggs. And when she's done, she'll return to Great Meadows. Chicken wire will keep the eggs safe from predators. This is the fourth nest that's hatched out, out of the, the 10 that we're watching. But every one of the eggs that was fertilized, 24 out of 24, lived to hatch successfully into a healthy baby. In nature, if you don't protect the nest from predators, maybe as few as 5% of the eggs survive to hatching to, it would be really good if 30 or 40% survive to hatching. Protecting the eggs and making sure they hatch is only the first challenge for grassroots wildlife conservation. They're not all going to stay there for very long. Left to their own devices, the hatchlings would now begin a perilous journey to find their way back to the swamp. All oh, seven brothers and sisters. On their own, very few would survive to reach their first birthday. So this turtle would need to avoid getting squashed on a road. And more importantly, in terms of danger, right, this little turtle 
was just a couple of days ago, its shell was folded like this to fit inside an oblong egg shell. Its shell is really soft. The turtle is a bite-sized snack for almost any predator you can think of. Essentially, it's a race for these baby turtles to get to the swamp, to hide, and then to hope that they don't get eaten for the next three years or so until they get big enough that their shell becomes good, solid protection for them. We're giving these turtles a, a safe shortcut to that. These hatchlings will be raised for nine months by school children in more than 20 Massachusetts schools. Over 2,000 school kids have participated in the program. What are your turtles kids? Um, squirt and swampy. Squirt and swampy. And how are they doing? Pretty well. These guys are so much more capable of protecting themselves from predators, of using their shell as defense. Today, two nine-month-old hatchlings will be released back into Great Meadows. Holy! And if all goes well, this is how big the hatchlings will be in 30 years. Kelly's a male because he's got a really scooped-in bottom shell. Yeah. Really thin, so you can touch the skull yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Very thin skin. Oh my gosh, they are so connected to the turtles. They love the turtles. Brian's teaching is just rippling out in the community. It's really a great thing. You've done an awesome job raising these guys, right? They're nine or ten times bigger than when you got them. They have a way, way better chance of living to be as old and as big as that Blatting's turtle, number 2039, that you just saw. I really hope that they, like, have a good life and they just be free out here and they live for a long time. Oh, yeah. I don't want them to die out because um, when a creature dies out, it kind of slows and the makes the world kind of go down a little bit. What we're trying to communicate to the kids, the adults who work with us on this project is that it's possible for you to make a difference. Back leg, back leg. Wildlife conservation is a huge global problem. Right, people hear about polar bears and about tigers and whales and animals that often live far away from you. Yeah. The water would just completely roll right off, oh, right? But there are rare animals, there are rare plants that live pretty much near everybody. There are species in nature that can use help from local human neighbors everywhere. And by finding out about what's around you, and about often really simple ways to help and, uh, and really be part of making the natural world around them a little bit richer and a little bit better over the long